Hi everyone, welcome. Boy, am I glad to see you. Guess what? I almost didn't exist anymore. That's right. <laughs> Which is kind of what all this is about. This is kind of my way of facing a fear or dealing with a tragic or almost tragic, I should say, event. That's right. I, it got cold here the other night and like a thousand times before I started a fire in the fireplace, um, sat back in my chair and this was on Friday night. Well, I was really tired. As I told you all, I've been working a lot of overtime and I kind of just crashed. <laughs> and I wasn't paying a lot of attention. And then suddenly I kind of woke up and I could smell smoke and my eyes were burning. As soon as I opened my eyes, they were burning with smoke. And I looked over at the fire, which was just a couple of small logs, which were just kind of just barely smoldering whenever I apparently dozed off. But suddenly it was a roaring fire and there was a noise of just, just this loud whooshing noise, just a, a kind of a low rumble. And I of course knew exactly what it, what it was. I had a chimney fire. I ran outside and I looked at, up at the chimney and there were flames shooting out of it. And I remembered all those stories I've seen about homes that have been lost to chimney fires and thought, oh geez, I'm gonna have to run in and start Grabbing what I can, getting it out of the house before the whole thing goes up in flames and get Barry out and the cats. And, and then I remembered that I was smart. <laughs> when my partner was alive, his sister had a house fire and they lost their entire home. And when that happened, I went over and helped them pick up what was salvageable out of the ashes. And one of the things I thought at that time is that's not going to happen to me. So I bought a bunch of fire extinguishers and smoke alarms and things like that. And the smoke that was in my house wasn't quite enough where it was to set off the smoke alarm yet. I was maybe 15 feet from the fireplace. So that's why I was getting the smoke before the fire alarm even went off. But what I did remember is that I had fire extinguishers. So I bought, I have bought them. I kind of did overkill when I bought them. I bought five of them, one for each bedroom and a big one for the kitchen. And so I grabbed the big one that hangs in my laundry room. It's the kitchen fire extinguisher and it's one of the rather large ones. And I first opened the glass doors to the fireplace and I aimed it right at the current, at the fire that was in the fireplace and kind of put it out, so to speak. It sucked a lot of the oxygen out so that it it went down. Then I was able to take the hose and point it upward into the flue and then pull the button, pull the handle on the fire extinguisher. And it did actually put out the fire all the way up to the top. And of course, I breathed a big sigh of relief, but okay, so what does this have to do with what I'm doing here? I like fire. I love fire. I respect fire, <laughs> but I got the uh, ever-living devil scared out of me. <laughs> that really freaked me out. And uh, I'm not afraid of fire. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to make some incense. <laughs> it just occurred to me I haven't made any this year, and it's the holiday season. That's when I really like my incense. I make it with my own. This is actually, you've seen me make my cedar powder out of the needles and berries. This is actually made from the wood. This is where I take the wood and grind it up into just these finer, almost like sawdust. And it's great for making incense. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And uh, I will tell you, look at me make a mess. I will tell you that that really did scare me a lot. Um, it, it just didn't occur. To, I'm not going to make a lot of this. That should be maybe one more scoop. It certainly did give me pause. Oh, 
right. So to the wood, which is kind of the, uh, it kind of serves double purpose as a binder and as the aromatic, the fragrance. I'm also adding sandalwood powder. Sandalwood powder is just one of those great bases in incense that just adds that little something extra. And then finally, my own pine resin that has been ground to a fine powder. So this and this were just these three ingredients. Then I'm going to add water, not too much. Just want to get it moistened. So I'm just forming this into a dough. Don't add too much water up front. You can always add more water if you need it. But this looks like this is just right. See how it's kind of forming into these little balls? That's about right. But I just want to give it a good mix. I don't I'm not going to add any essential oils to this because the sandalwood and the ground cedar will give it all that it needs as far as uh, fragrance goes, in my opinion. All right, so that's about mixed, and now we're going to mold this. So some people use like their piping tips to form the cone, which I here I'll show you just real quick one way you can do that. But if you do this, make sure that you pack it good. Take a dowel or a chopstick and kind of pack it down in there. Hang on, let me adjust the camera here. that direct light off. Actually, I just used my hands for this. So I'm just packing this down. And just continue adding to it. There are faster ways, there are special tools you can get for this purpose, but how hard is this, right? This is one way. This isn't necessarily my preferred way, but it's one way. I just wanted to show this to you. That the most important thing you want to do is make sure it's packed in. So you've got a good, nice, tight, incense. If it's too loose, it's going to burn really fast and be really smoky. But you want the smoke, but you want it to burn a little slower. So by tightly packing it in here, we're making sure that it's good and tight. Alright, so at this point, if you've made um, bath bombs, you've, or watched someone make bath bombs, you've probably seen this very thing. They've, folks tapping to get it out. And you can do that with this. You can do that. Or, if you're like me, and get a little impatient, you can give it just a little tap. Like so. And there you have your incense cone. And then you would set these to dry. So using a method like this, it's just cleaner and easier than forming them by hand. In my opinion, that, you know, you do what you like.
There are so many different things we can do. I just wanted to show you what I do, what I like to do. And um, again, I am so thankful right now that things went well, that I had those fire extinguishers, that I woke up. I could have easily have been poisoned by carbon monoxide and not awakened, right? So I'm glad things worked out the way they did. So they're not perfect, but they work. So I'm just putting it in some salt. You could use sand, you could use whatever you have, gravel, just something non-flammable. It already smells good. <laughs> it does. So I'm just going to let it burn a moment. Get it started. And then we'll blow it out and just let it slowly smolder. And there we have our insect. So enjoy a cup of tea and some lovely incense and put your day to bed. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoyed this everyone. See you back soon. Goodbye.